here in Sacramento with their usual strong array of distance runners. But Carol, as the third day of competition began on the track, the Hogs were hoping to run away from the competition on the fleet feet of their powerful 4x100 meter relay team. But all I can say is hold the phone because we've covered quite a few of these NCAA championships and there's always a couple of stars that are out there hoping to run their teams in the contention. I'm talking about University of Florida's Karan Clement and Florida State's Walter Dix. Those are two guys you need to watch. The 4x1, an early showdown featuring the Arkansas sprint duo of Wallace Spearman and Tyson Gay against Florida's Clement and the Seminoles' Dix. These are definitely not your same old Razorbacks. Distance runners were the foundation of the Hogs dynasty. Omar Brown running the anchor for Arkansas in a battle with Caron Clement, and Brown holds him off at the finish. Brown's stare down left an indelible image for all to ponder. Earlier in the meet, the Hogs scored at will, the more traditional way, by going long. Teammates Peter Koske and Joseph Boyd ran 10,000 sultry meters in the Sacramento night. Though there would be no victory for either, they earned a combined 19 points courtesy of a third and sixth place finish. Less than 24 hours later, it was Koske again. This time Field with a fourth place finish in the Javelin, earning All-America honors for the second consecutive year. Despite Karan Clements' anchor carry in the relay, the Gators were clearly disappointed with their runner-up finish. They were hungry for a win, and Josh Walker fed them what they wanted. Walker being challenged. Josh Walker wins it. His victory kept the Gators within shouting distance of Arkansas. Freshman sensation Walter Dix, fresh off his American junior record, threw the gauntlet down in the hundred. Trying to get the win. Dix is there as well. And it's Dix on the acceleration at the tape. Takes the title in the men's 100 meters. And a look at the updated men's standings as we enter the final day of competition. Arkansas leads the way, followed by Florida, Virginia Tech, and Florida State has now moved into a tie for fourth. Important race out on the track, the men's 400-meter finals. Top collegiate mark set back in 1992. Quincy Watts from USC, best time in 2005. It's Daryl Williamson from Baylor. He did it in the semifinals. And he did it high and easily. He cruised the first 200 meters, and in the third 100 meters of the race on this turn, he just blew everybody away, Otto. And yes, yes he did, and after his 44-27 in that semifinal, he says he now wants to run 43. Not the right way to think right now. He needs to be thinking about keeping these seven athletes behind him. 2004 Olympic gold medalist, and he's got a lot of competition, including Ricardo Chambers from Florida State. Just a freshman. He's improved mightily this year, has the best time under 45 seconds for 400 meters. And in lane three, Terry Gatson. Now, he used to be an 800-meter runner, ran 150 in high school, so there's no lack of endurance with this athlete. Senior Jamel. Darrell Williamson, how much effort did he expend in the semifinals? That's a question heading into this championship race. There, Ian, is the man who's the surprise so far of this 400-meter final. Jamel Ashley, a senior at Mississippi State, got under 45 seconds. What is he handling? And in lane seven, Kelly Willie. Now, he has a difficult lane draw in that he can't see the big guns behind him. However, he's going to go out really hard because he can't see. Look at the entire lane assignments. It is Williamson in lane five from Baylor, Chambers in lane three, Gatson in lane four, Ashley in lane six, and in lane seven, Kelly Willie. Daryl Williamson with a stacked field in this men's 400 meter finals. Two Olympic gold medalists and maybe a future Olympian in Chambers from Florida State. Clean start in the men's 400 meter championship. The United States Ion is dominant at this event on the world scene. Always has been, and there's more talent coming on now out of the collegiate ranks than ever in history. Kelly Willie, excellent start in lane seven, wearing the black for LSU. And Williamson is sticking to his plan. He does not go out particularly hard, and right here, he's running the way he wants to run. He's controlling the race. 
Watch the man from Baylor in green in the center of the track. Here he comes. Darrell Williamson, lane number five, the senior. So much effort in the semifinals. Will he have enough gas to win this championship? And he's being challenged on the outside. Ashley trying to push Williamson. Darrell Williamson will continue the Baylor tradition in the men's 400 meter finals. 44-51 is the final time. As we see Williamson on the turn here, on the far turn, I think he did the, what, what he was supposed to do. He went out the way he was supposed to. He does not go out particularly hard. He makes his move right here, and that's what he did. I think he would have liked to run a little bit faster. And this was the way he was successful in the semis, running the world's fastest 400 meters this year. Take him from behind, run the first 200 meters relaxed, and he cruises to the finish line. And an excellent race by Ashley getting up for second place. Darrell Williamson can tack on another title to his resume. Against a competitive field, it's Williamson who wins it. Downstairs to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks a lot, Darrell. Congratulations. A stacked field out there today. Did you feel the pressure on that final stretch on your outside shoulder? Yeah, I felt the pressure. Uh, I didn't run as good as the race I did yesterday. But, uh, of course, I'm happy with the win. It's still a very impressive time, so... I'm just pleased with my performance. Uh, just looking forward to my next meet. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. And a look at the final results as Darrell Williamson takes the men's 400 meters. Jamel Ashley from Mississippi State finishes second. Andre Williams from Texas Tech in third. Baylor continues the fine tradition in the men's 400 meters. This time, it's Darrell Williamson's turn. CBS Sports presents over last year's loss to UCLA, Lady Longhorns trying to turn it around this year. Right now, let's take a look back at how the action unfolded through the first three days of the women's competition. The meet began ominously for the defending champs in the very first event. Discus thrower Lara Say, expected to contribute key points, failed to advance to the final. Things went from bad to worse. In the pole vault, defending champion Chelsea Johnson was being counted on to battle for another title. But she made a huge tactical error, passing at two lower heights and then missing all three attempts and failing to advance to the final. This costs the Bruins dearly. The Lady Longhorns arrived in Sacramento still haunted by last year's championship loss to the Bruins on their home track. But Marcia Butt Hooker was determined to take matters into her own hands. She began by long jumping 21-8 good for second place and eight points. I had a hard time adjusting to my mark, but I just stayed with it, listened to my coach, and came out and did what I had to do. The four by one would be a battleground between Texas and their other rival for the title, South Carolina. Despite receiving the baton two steps behind the Gamecocks, Hooker carried the day, spreading the Lady Longhorns to victory, much to the delight of their coach, Bev Kearney. Less than two hours later, it was a sophomore Marsha Fett hooker again, this time in the 100-meter final. And Hooker is off to a great start, but she has some work to do here. Marsha Fett hooker trying to win this event. Hooker running strong and takes it at the finish. In a 24-hour span over two days, Marsha Fett hooker contributed 28 out of a possible 30 team points putting Texas in position to win the title. And starting the final day of competition, the women's team standings, Texas running number one, 31 points, UCLA defending champions currently in fourth place, South Carolina with an opportunity to get pivotal points here, which leads us to the women's 400 meter finals. Best collegiate time, 1989, Pauline Davis, Alabama, Best time in 2005, Monique Henderson from UCLA. Individually, a major storyline here involving Henderson. Definitely, and Monique Henderson, she used to have the high school record at 400 meters. She earned her stripes last year in the 2004 edition of this meet. She ran 49.6, that's equal to the fastest split ever at this meet, and she preserved the meet for Jeanette Bolden's Lady Bruins. I'm always impressed with her and this the efforts that she's put forth here in this event. We'll see what she can do now. You're looking at Stephanie Smith and her coach, Curtis Fry, suffering right now a great deal of stress. He needs big points for this woman who had the third fastest qualifier coming into the finals of the 400 meters here. 
A look at the entire field with Henderson in lane five from UCLA to her right in lane six. Stephanie Smith, South Carolina. Also Natasha Hastings in lane two from South Carolina. And Texas looking for points here with Jerrica Chapel running out of lane number one. The pressure iron, particularly on watch lanes one. That is Jerrica Chapel from Texas. They need her to run well. And University of South Carolina has two entrants in lane two, of course, and in lane six, Stephanie Smith, who we highlighted. They need big points here. This is one of the critical events for South Carolina in their quest for the team title. A pivotal event, the women's 400 meters. Monique Henderson in her final race of her collegiate career in lane five. These women are going so fast around this track, and they will average four full strides each second for the entire lap of the race. And Monique does not go outside. Here she is going out very hard. She's already in control of this race. Also, Natasha Hastings in lane two, wearing the black, a good showing. Phenomenal. This is unbelievable if she doesn't tie up. She has about five yards on the rest of the field. Sensational as we approach 140 meters to go on the race. Monique Henderson heading for home, trying to end her collegiate career on a high note. And after so many years of frustration, look at Monique, look at her, look at the strike. She is shaking off four years of frustration right here. Henderson has her individual NCAA championship in 50-11, the women's 400 meters. That is the fastest collegiate time ever run. 50.10 seconds officially. She breaks Pauline Davis's record of 16 years ago. A great performance. And after all those years of struggling, she came out of high school highly touted and got complacent, I think, even by her own admission. And now she's finally done it. She said it was so easy in high school. I didn't understand it. I was living a dream. I just kept running well all the time. And she just went from the gun here, obviously confident she could hold a very, very high level pace. And she obviously has a lot of confidence in her fitness because when she went out that hard, she had to think, I have to have enough to go home. And she did, and then some. Look how her form is not broken down at all. Terrific fitness level, justifying her Olympic gold medal on the relay last year. This is her first ever NCAA title to give you an idea of the quality of competition here at the NCAAs. What a moment for Monique Henderson. She's downstairs with Tracy. Monique, what a race, a collegiate and a meet record. Did you realize you were going that fast? No. I had no idea. It's felt really good out there. Glad I got the victory. Four years at UCLA, this is the title you've been waiting for. You have a gold medal now, an NCAA title. Is this all you've been waiting for? Oh, this is it. This caps are great. Four years. I'm so, so happy right now. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And the maturity has paid off for Monique Henderson in her final collegiate meet. Henderson wins the women's 400 meters. A time of 50-10, new collegiate record. Tiandra Pontine from Florida finishing second. Stephanie Smith from South Carolina. Key points as they get nine out of this event. It's been great. Thank you but so the spotlight much. right now on Number Monique one. Henderson from UCLA. Lady Bruins combined with the points from the field. Back in it, tied with Texas as we wave goodbye to Henderson from Sacramento. High jump. So the Gators trying to make a move in the men's competition. We take a look at the updated standings. Arkansas leads the way with 34. Florida with 28 points. USC currently in third. Time right now for the men's 1,500 meters. The best collegiate mark, Sidney Marie from Villanova, set back in 1981. Idaho State's Paul Hoffman, best mark here in 2005. Storyline here, crucial points for Arkansas. And we will see how Adam Perkins handles the pressure. He is their lone entrant in the 1500 meters. He had a personal best by four seconds running a 339 1500 meters to get to the final. Chris Lukasik, if the pace is slow, this man can really kick. Uh, been an East Coast uh, star for the last couple of years at Georgetown and was a terrific high school star as well. I am. Larry, let's take a look at the entire field. Perkins from Arkansas, Lukasik, as you mentioned, from Georgetown. Lionel Manzano, he's just a freshman from Texas. There is Paul Hoffman, best time in 2005. 
And we are set for the men's 1500 meters. I and the heats to get into this final were held two days ago and all these athletes ran the metric mile, the equivalent between 357 for the mile and 404. In order to get All-American status at the NCAA championships, they give it to the top eight finishers in every event that's contested, running event and field event. And they reach back as far as the top eight Americans. So if there's some foreigners in between, they also get all-American status. Adam Perkins from Arkansas wearing the white currently behind Stephen Piper in the black from Colorado. Pace looks very solid to me here. Often in these distance races, because athletes frequently run more than one event, they will be strategic and they will often be slow in the first half and they wind up being kickers races. This just looking at leg turnover looks like a very solid pace here and the men's 1500 meters. Chris Lukasik from Georgetown comes in as the favorite. He's wearing the blue. And one thing you should point out, he's back in the pack right now. That's Pfeiffer from Colorado in the lead. Adam Perkins from Arkansas running strongly in second. But Lukasik can kick like crazy. He's a very strong 800-meter runner, very fast. And I think he would like to see someone else lead and would prefer a pace, I think, that might be a little slower than this. 57 seconds plus for the first 400 meters. Very solid, fast pace here. Perkins in second place likes this. He was a 408 high school miler as a junior, was the man in second place from Arkansas, and he says he likes a strong, solid pace. And Chris Lukasik now in third from Georgetown. Arkansas, this has been a strong event for the Razorbacks through the years, and Adam Perkins carries their best hopes for scoring some key points. I and many fine young Americans in here, nine of the 12 finalists you're looking at are underclassmen in this race, only three seniors among them. The man in the lead is a sophomore. And there is Lukasik on the outside from Georgetown. He will take the lead. 800 meters passed in a fast, one minute, 56.8 seconds. I'm surprised Lukasik is up there pushing the pace. He must feel very confident of his fitness level. Perkins continues to run strongly in second. Chris Lukasik, 2005 Big East champion, leading Adam Perkins from Arkansas. I and the man in third place bears watching. That's Paul Hoffman with the season's fastest time by a collegian. He's from Australia running for Idaho State. Hoffman, junior, 2005, Big Sky champion, currently in third as Lukasik now opens up a bigger lead. Final lap in the men's 1500 meters. Lukasik powering away from the field. This is an extraordinarily fast pace here. Coming up to 1200 meters, it just steps away. 254, terrific collegiate time through 1200 meters for Chris Lukasik of Georgetown. Adam Perkins from Arkansas beginning to fade now as Lukasik extends that lead. That's Brian Lindsay from BYU moving up, chasing Lukasik in second place. So now being challenged, Chris Lukasik trying to hold off the competition. Perkins really falling behind from Arkansas. He is back in seventh place right now. Look at Lionel Manzano, the freshman from Texas. Where did he come from? Lionel Manzano, the freshman, passing Lukasik, and Manzano is going to win the men's 1,500 meters. Perkins coming back to take fourth place for Arkansas. Perkins, a mad dash to score points for the Razorbacks. Terrific, terrific time here. Unofficially, 337.13, 3 minutes, 37.13 seconds for Manzano. That's a 355 mile for that freshman from Texas. Terrific performances here in the finals of the 1500 meters. Look at Manzano in third. Look at him sweep wide. He let the early pace go, and then he's run strongly, perhaps more strongly than anybody, over the last 800 meters of the race. Excellent kick. His family moved to the United States a number of years ago, thrilled to be here, he told me, and he has really risen to the occasion here at the NCAA Finals with an easily a personal best to run a sensational college time. And Adam Perkins gets five valuable points 
for Arkansas. And Larry, Chris Lukasik from Georgetown, the favorite coming in, falls all the way to sixth. Manzano wins it. This was a tight race throughout. Arkansas gets five points, and Tracy is with Adam Perkins. You still get fourth for Arkansas. You get some points. How important was that? It was really important. I mean, you know, I wanted to lay it out on the line because I know our big competition was Florida and Florida State, and those two guys were right in front of me at the finish, and I just nipped them barely because I was like, I can't let them beat me. I was like, because, uh, you know, like, it's all about the team right now. So, Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Thank you. Updated men's team standings here in Sacramento. Arkansas with 39 points. Florida now with 32. Back with more after these words. Park in the 2005 Outdoor Championships. For more, here's Tracy Wolfson. Thanks, Ian. The University of Florida's national championship hopes hinge on a young star from Trinidad who recently became an American citizen. At just the age of 19, he's already set a world record and won an NCAA indoor and outdoor title. His name is Karan Clement, and while this may be your first time ever hearing of him, it certainly will not be your last. Inside Track, presented by Coca-Cola. Originally, I'm from Trinidad, Port of Spain. I started like when I was probably eight. I realized that I was actually good when I used to win against the big people. My neighbors, they were like, this kid gonna be pretty good one day, but I didn't believe them because this was like fun for me. And they thought I was gonna be great, but I didn't think until now. Ah, uh, speed. Uh, speed. Broke Michael Johnson's record. Clement, the sophomore, who just shifted gears and took the pole position and just gapped Willie at about 10 meters. The world record was never in my mind. It was an experience for me that I won't forget. And Clement blows this field away. It is Clement, unofficially 44-57, which would be a world record. It's going to be some stuff you're going to see. As soon as I turn around and watch the clock, I seriously I almost wanted to cry. I was overwhelmed at the time. Everybody was just going crazy. I was just really, really excited that I broke the record. He's starting to understand that running is just more than going out and running. There's a technical side of the track and field, and I think his work ethic is good. If anything, I think that he realizes he has to step his game up even more because now everybody's targeting him. He's really just a baby. I mean, he's still 19 years old. I'm just glad God blessed me and sent him my way. My mom, she gives me a lot of motivation, and um, she gives me advice every time in track meets. I call her on my cell phone, and I say, Mom, I'm nervous. And she, you know, she always would tell me stuff to motivate me and give me courage. She's an inspiration for me. Heart, determination, team player. Karan's one of those guys that uh, everybody kind of looks up to and like kind of the subtle way do his athletic ability. And he just he basically leads by example. You always know that when Quran steps to the line, he's going to do the best for the team, has the team's interest always in mind. I became a U.S. citizen because I wanted to run in the U.S. That's always been my dream, to run for the U.S. The U.S. have great athletes in every event. I wanted to run with the best in the world, and training here is going to maximize my potential. Right now, I'm still young, I'm still 19. I have time to grow, but I hate failure. My goal is to be successful. That's every athlete's dream to win gold. Guys, Clemens' quest for gold will have to wait one more meet. Right now, his sights are set on winning a national championship, and as he told me earlier, setting a personal record, if not a world record, in the 400-meter hurdles. That would be the perfect ending to what has been a brief, but no doubt, outstanding career. Ian. Well, Tracy, Karan Clement possesses so much natural ability, something else that comes natural to Karan Clement, his million-dollar smile. You can't teach that, Otto. No, you can't, Ian. And when I spoke to him earlier this week, the first thing that comes across is his immense poise. He is only 19 years old, but I think he is the greatest 400-meter and 400-meter hurdle talent to come around in a long time. This meet presents his opportunity to go from a boy to a man. Otto, you mentioned his age, just 19, Larry, but he does come across wise beyond his years. He really does. He's a press many people, including the man you saw in the videotape, and that is head coach at Florida, Mike Holloway. And he said, Larry, I've been with this guy for a couple of years. He said, I have a very young daughter, and I pray that someday she marries a man who has the same qualities as Karan Clement. Coming up, Karan Clement's moment in the sun. 
here in Sacramento. The 400 meter hurdles, the finals are next. On the, the collegiate record set back in 1988, Karan Clement from Florida. We've talked so much about the star quality that this young man has. Well, now is his time to shine. It certainly is, but he has been struggling here in the semifinals. Watch him clip his steps. He has trouble late in the race over generally the last three or four hurdles, Otto, and he hasn't got it together yet here at this competition. No, he has not. And in qualifying, I know every one of his competitors looked at this race. They smell the blood in the water. Is Karen Clement vulnerable right now? World indoor record holder, and a rivalry is developing with one Benny Brazel from LSU. Terrific talent, has a lifetime best right at 48 seconds. And he wound up on the U.S. Olympic team and made the final at 400 meters in Athens, the hurdle race. The lane assignments. Karan Clement did not have his best showing in the semifinals. That's why he is in lane six. Brazel, tremendous in the semifinals in lane five out of LSU. Keep an eye open also for Michael Tinsley in lane four, sophomore from Jackson State. And it's important to note in this race, Brazil is behind Clement. If Clement runs a mistake-free race, I think it's his to lose. However, Brazil has been at this level before and even higher. He Remember, he is an eighth-place finisher in the Olympics in Athens last year. Highly anticipated showdown in the men's 400-meter hurdles. Karan Clement in the white, running out of lane six for Florida. Ten hurdles, three feet high. Each step is planned in your training, and you approach each hurdle in full flight is the goal, of course. Clement has taken the lead. Benny Brazel, lane five, wearing the black with yellow for LSU. This is a statement race for Karan Clement. Everybody saw that race in qualifying. They saw him have his problems. This is a statement to everybody. No, I am not that bad. I am as good as my last race, but here I am, I'm gonna run even better. Clement has had issues on the final two hurdles previously. Will he handle them here? Benny Brazel has the lead on Clement. It's a two-way battle. Brazel and Clement, closing speed from Clement. Will he pass him? Yes! Karan Clement comes from behind. 47-56, yeah. the sophomore from Florida. And what NC, a finish. An NCAA record. And we're having a great outpouring of support and great times here today. Clement breaks the 400-meter hurdle record by the great Kevin Young of UCLA. And that is the fastest time run in the world this year for the 400-meter hurdle race. You'll never see, if you ever watch much track and field, an event like this run so poorly in the late stages and a sprint like that at the finish and be a world leader. It speaks to the world of talent that this man has. I mean, we're talking a man who could threaten the world record by Kevin Young, and we're talking about breaking Michael Johnson's 400 meter record maybe. That was just unbelievable what he did down the home stretch after messing up so badly. And Larry, what separates the good from the great is how you respond to a bad race. In great his semifinal run by hurdle three, he was already out of sync. And here we see him in this final race. He's as close to perfect at this point as he could possibly be going down the back stretch. All right, now watch all of you at home here. Keep an eye on this. You can measure it yourself. Look at him chop the steps there. He lost ground. Benny sees this. He's moving even with him. Watch him clear the hurdles well, does Brazil Smoothly. Chopped again. Look at this mess. That's terrible. You lose all kinds of momentum. Now look at the strength and speed he still has. Very, almost impossible to do this by any mortal being. Yeah, don't try this at home, folks. Only Karan Clement can come off the last hurdle, chop this badly, have somebody with the talent of a Benny Brazil right next to you, and simply just run him down off of hurdle 10. Remember, the man he just whipped up on LSU is an Olympic finalist in this event. Karan Clement and Benny Brazil, tremendous finish as we go trackside and Tracy. Karan, in the prelims, you were struggling, chopping your steps before the hurdle. What kind of adjustments did you make going into this one? Did you feel you had to make a statement? Um, I just stayed focused for the finals. In the prelims, that means I was, I was an ads focus, but now I am. You've raced against Clement. You know what it takes to beat him. What was going through your mind down that final stretch? I'll just give it all I can. And that's what I did. That's it. A world leader, a collegiate record in this race. Also huge team points for Florida. You guys take the lead. Was that important to you as well? Oh, definitely. It's always a win for Florida for the team points. I'm very happy about that. Well, congratulations to the both of you.
Karan Clement rising to the occasion on a very big stage, the 2005 Outdoor Championships. 47.56, new collegiate record, Benny Brazell, nothing to be ashamed of, 47.67. In second, Michael Tinsley finishes in third place from Jackson State, 10 points for Florida. And they take the lead with 42 on top of Arkansas. Karan Clement, another championship to add to his collection. We realized that we needed to bounce back. So this I just think that to win that championship together would make Bev just season, because we know it all came from her. Bev means a great deal to me to see how much fight she has in her, and uh, that reflects me on the track, because I look over and I see my coach, you know, you, you can do it. So, I mean, she's just very motivational. She's very inspirational to me. I hope that it shows everyone that no matter what you're facing in life, never, ever give up on your dream. Always, you know, just stay in there and be very passionate and committed and you never know. Texas dealt with so much disappointment in 2004. Disappointment that they're now using for motivation here in 2005. The updated women's team standings. Lady Longhorns tied with UCLA, but Texas has more scoring opportunities than UCLA does the rest of this meet. Now it's time for the women's 400 meter hurdles. Collegiate record, Sheena Johnson, set last year in Austin from UCLA. Shauna Smith from Wyoming, not exactly a national powerhouse. She's got the best mark in 2005. But you've got a couple of storylines here because of the team points at stake. Seven women qualified for the Lady Longhorns to compete here. They're in many ways led by this woman, Melaine Walker, the favorite to win in this event. A lot of pressure on her because there's several South Carolina women here. And just in front of her, Tiffany Ross Williams, the junior from South Carolina. She redshirted last year. She was third at this event in 03. Wyoming has several good athletes here to compete. Among them, Shauna Smith, and she came in with superb time here, and she has got lane four in this race. Look at all the competitors with Malane Walker in lane number five, Tiffany Ross Williams from South Carolina, lane six, and Shauna Smith. Individual battle for her trying to win the NCAA Outdoor Championship. Out in lane seven, Dominique Darden's dad, Tony, in the late 70s, ranked in the world among the top 10 400 meter runners in his day. Texas looking for points. South Carolina looking for points. The women's 400 meter hurdles. Clean start, Malane Walker in lane five, wearing the white, the junior from Texas. 10 hurdles, two and a half feet high for the women. And you're seeing Malane Walker move out smartly already in the back stretch, Ian. Walker is leading the way here in the women's 400 meter championship. And this is the kind of race she has to run. 10 points is critical for Texas in this team race, and she's already taking control of the field, including Tiffany Ross Williams are outside. Miami's Dominique Darden running second in the green in lane seven. The 2005 Big 12 champion, Malane Walker, leads it. But she's got some competition on her outside from Tiffany Ross Williams. They're not going to let her have it. And on the outside, Siobhan Stoddard from South Carolina. And a challenge on the inside, Shauna Smith from Wyoming. The senior takes the lead and wins it at the tape. She puts up a time of 54-32 to win the outdoor NCAA crown. Shauna Smith. And 14 valuable points for South Carolina getting second and third with a fade down the stretch of the favorite from Texas, Malane Walker. Huge disappointment. Coach Bev Kearney of the Texas, Texas Lady Longhorns, I'm sure is having heart failure right now with that fade down the stretch. But you've got to be happy for Shauna Smith from Wyoming. She's a senior. That's the way you want to end your college career. 
third in the 2004 Outdoor Championships. She wins it here in 2005. From the gun, look what happens here. Early on, Malane Walker, full of confidence, decides to go for it. Every step is measured in this race, in hurdle racing. Look at her. She's already one to two steps clear of the field by the second barrier, and she flies down the backstretch. When you go out too fast in short races like this, even long ones, somebody in the latter stages of the race hands you a piano. Absolutely, and if you if you look at that replay, Shauna Smith is taking her time, and at this point, now when Malane Walker starts to tie up, Shauna Smith smells the blood in the water, and here she comes. She ran the best last two hurdles of this race, and that's why she was able to pull off the win. Look how far back she was, and again, a great race by both South Carolina women. Tiffany Ross Williams gets up, holds on well at the finish. Both of them do. Look at Stoddard. Superb race for Curtis Fry's ladies. Shauna Smith from Wyoming. Topped her collegiate mark from earlier this year. And she wins the women's 400 meter hurdles, 54-32. Larry, you talked about the importance for South Carolina. Second and third place finishes. 14 points out of this event. Texas has to settle for five. Let's go downstairs. Tracy Wolfson is with Malane Walker from Texas. Malane, you had the lead. What happened down the stretch? The thing is, I didn't think I ran my own race. I wanted to get out and be in front and everything. And that's not normally how I run. But I was trying to, you know, go out there and win this race for my team and, you know, feel good about myself. Updated team standings, a blow to Texas. They still lead it with 37 points, but look who's creeping up behind them. South Carolina now tied for second with 32. Back with more in a moment. Sacramento legendary Arkansas coach John McDonald chance to win his third straight NCAA outdoor championship. As we take a look at the men's team standings, Florida actually leading the way, but don't let the numbers fool you. Razorbacks three points behind Florida entering the men's 200 meters. Arkansas can win the national championship with a strong showing here. They need 14 more points than Florida to clinch the title. Justin Gatlin, best collegiate mark ever, set back in 2002. Tyson Gay, top mark in 2005. Yes, and he'll run out of lane five. A great lane for him in that he can see everyone to his outside. They can't see him. He beat Gay and Spearman already this year at the SEC Championships. Tyson Gay, Arkansas, running out of lane six, 2004 NCAA champion in the 100 meters. Didn't qualify this year in that event, so he is making up for it in the 200 meters. The semifinal was scintillating. He ran 1993, a big, huge personal best for him. He's under a lot of pressure right now because all eyes are on him. Everybody wants to see, can he duplicate this run that he had in the semifinals of 19.93? Fastest 200 in the world in the semifinals for Tyson Gay. Other storylines, how about Walter Dix, the freshman from Florida State, NCAA champion in the 100 meters. And he's coming into this race with no pressure. He's already won the 100 meter dash. All he has to do now and all he can do now is to upset the team points for Arkansas. If you're a fan of any other of the teams in the men's race, you want this guy to win because he's gonna upset the Arkansas apple cart. On the other side of Dix, Arkansas's Wallace Spearman, the 2004 NCAA champion in this event. And he's in lane eight, not usually a great lane in this race, but he has a bum knee. He's also pretty tall. This will get him off the turn quick. A great lane draw for him. And a look at the field, Omar Brown in lane one. Points for Arkansas can come from one, six, and eight. Florida really needs Kyle Farmer to step forward here in lane three. Yes, they do. Spearman does not run a good turn, but he storms home. Gay is a contrast. He runs a fantastic turn. Men's 200 meter championship. A stacked field. 
had a good start. And Tyson's gaze off to a fantastic start. He's already making up the stagger on Walter Dix from Florida State. The question is, can Spearman hold on and come back at him down this home stretch? Gay wearing the red in lane number six. Tyson Gay trying to push it. Carter in the black in lane five. On the outside, Spearman! Wallace Spearman falls down as he hit the tape. 19-9-1, Wallace Spearman has defended his title. And this was a battle of the turn runner versus the straight runner, and the straight runner won today because Wallace Spearman, I would love to see what his split was coming home. He ran a decent turn, very good by his standards, but coming home, he absolutely obliterated Tyson Gay and Xavier Carter. From the gun, Tyson Gay did what he had to do. He got out. He made up the stagger on Walter Dix. But watch Wallace Spearman in lane eight. He is biding his time. He knows if I get on this straight and I'm in contention, my superior finishing speed is going to bring me this NCAA title. And he defends his NCAA title here out of lane eight and takes a dive at the end. Look, look at the relaxation right here on Wallace Spearman's face. He knows all I have to do is relax and let this speed come out. NCAA title number two for Wallace Spearman. And with that performance from Spearman and from Gay, they have clinched the national championship. Their 12th outdoor title. The men's 200 meters turned out to be the clincher for the Razorbacks. The final results, Wallace Spearman, 19 91. Carter finishes in second for LSU. Tyson Gay in third. That's 17 team points with Dix, the 100 meter champion from Florida State, finishing in fourth. The Razorbacks are your 2005 outdoor national champions on the men's side. And Ian, the way you win championships is to stick to your script. Wallace Spearin knew he couldn't do anything about Gay inside him. All he could do is rely on his finishing speed, which is the best in collegiate track and field. He runs one of the fastest this times ever collegiately. And for John McDonald, it is championship title number 41, indoor, outdoor, cross country, Arkansas reign supreme. He and Tyson Gay know that history has been made here. Arkansas has done it again, this time in Sacramento. Hornet Stadium still buzzing after the men's 200 meters. Worth another look. And you know, Ian, Tyson Gay's a great turn runner, but I think in this case, he ran the turn almost too hard because you have to have a strategy against Wallace Spearman. He finishes so well, you've got to say something for the last 50 meters because that's where Wallace Spearman is going to make his move. Wallace Spearman, the men's 200 meter NCAA champion in 2004, and once again, in 2005, not exactly the finish that he expected. Not really, and you know, I and one of the things is that you don't always remember the race, but you remember what happened right after the race, and he'll never forget that tumble he took trying to celebrate. And he'll never forget the fact that he and Tyson Gay helped clinch yet another national championship. Michelle Carter in the ring here in round five of the show. Officially, Arkansas has done it again. Let's go down to Tracy. First off, Wallace, not the way you wanted to celebrate on the training table. Are you okay? Yeah, my leg kind of gave out when I crossed the line. Luckily, it was after instead of during, so I'll take it. You beat out your teammate Tyson Gay, but Tyson, did you guys realize that this clinched the championship for you? No, I didn't. And my coach just said he wanted us to try to come one, two, three, so it doesn't matter who wins. And we almost done that. Well, congratulations, a 12th title for Arkansas. How does that feel knowing you announced today that you're going pro, that to do this in your final season? Go out with a bang. That's what we all try to do. We got it done. Got another ring. Well, congratulations to the both of you. Thank you. An unprecedented 41 NCAA titles for Arkansas, the most of any Division I track program for John McDonald. A high five and a phone call home. Our cameras caught up with him. I have to let the, the wife know. <laughs> oh, she was happy. She was happy. She didn't come out this time, but she was happy that we won. So did you know at that point that winning that race was going to clinch it? We figured if we, if we got um, uh, 16 points, they are pretty much with a clinch it. And Florida has... 44 right now, and if they win the, six, the relay, they'll have 54, and we have 56, so 
And we have the treble jump still to go and the 5,000. So. so 41. 41. Now I'm getting hungry for 50. <laughs> no. <laughs> not really, not really. One at a time. For John McDonald and the Arkansas Razorbacks, it is time to celebrate yet another NCAA crown. We're coming back to Sacramento after these words. As we turn our attention to the women's competition, three-way battle, Texas, UCLA, South Carolina, but the Lady Bruins don't have as many scoring chances as the other two teams. It sets us up for the women's 200 meters. Dawn Sowell from LSU, 1989, collegiate record. Shalonda Solomon from South Carolina, the collegiate best time in 2005, and a lot of pressure on her from a team standpoint to perform well here. South Carolina is very much in the hunt. Shalanda will run out of lane six. Only a freshman. She went to Long Beach Poly in Southern California, which Sports Illustrated just ranked the best high school sports program in the country. She's world junior champion at 200 meters. A look at the entire field with Kelly Baptiste out of LSU in lane one. Cleo Tyson from Tennessee in lane four. Tremedia Bryce, Texas Southern senior in lane five. And Alexis Weatherspoon out of USC in lane number nine. And Bryce of Texas Southern, her junior and senior year did not run high school track and she's walked onto the Texas Southern team and here she is at the NCAA champions, championships with a chance to win. This women's 200 meters up for grabs. South Carolina needs points, Texas does not have a participant in this race. Shalanda Solomon wearing the black for South Carolina, the freshman in lane six, off to a strong start. And she's gone out very hard. Now Shalanda Solomon runs a great turn, but she has what we call high school form. Sometimes she falters coming home, and here goes Tremedia Bryce right by her on the inside. Cherry Ann Brooks in lane number eight, also in the mix. Brooks in a battle, Solomon trying to fight it out right to the finish as they hit the tape. It was Sherry Ann Brooks from Florida International. And I actually think Sherry Ann Brooks did get it. And yes, it's confirmed now 2285 for Sherry Ann Brooks in the closest of margins, one hundredth of a second. Over Shalonda Solomon from South Carolina who takes second place. Shalonda Solomon runs a fantastic turn, but as, if you look at her form right there, there's a lot of wasted movement. And at this point, Sherry Ann Brooks from Fro Florida International senses her chance. Cleo Tyson also running well on the inside. And Sherry Ann Brooks from Florida International has the poise and the composure to lean and out lean Char and Art leans Shalonda Solomon for the title. Now Solomon had the weight of the world on her shoulders to put up a big effort. And they hit the stripe. Neck and neck. The edge to Sherry Ann Brooks by just that much. But a very, very important point for South Carolina by the freshman. So South Carolina gets the necessary points. They would have loved the 10, but Shalonda Solomon gets it done, and she's with her own Tracy Wilson. Shalonda, you were edged out at the finish line, but huge points in terms of the team competition. Did you feel the pressure to perform here? Um, yeah, no. I was going out there to do what I know I could do, but my team, my survival for the Lord, we gave mission to do it. What happened down the stretch? You had the early lead. Um, I don't know. I was trying to just go and she was just a bigger person at the end. So what happens? Well, thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you. And another look at the finish. Oh, so close between the two competitors. Absolutely, and I think Shalonda Solomon's form cost her right here because the form in the outside lane was superior, and that's what cost her the race. Cost her two team points, the difference between first and second place. South Carolina will take the eighth thanks to Shalonda Solomon's second place finish. Sherry Ann Brooks from Florida International, the women's 200 meters champion here at the 2005 Outdoor Games. So as South Carolina makes its move on the track, Texas and UCLA have answered in the field as we check in with the shot put. 
Miami's Kimberly Barrett was the prohibitive favorite in the ladies' shot, and she didn't disappoint with an outstanding throw of the 8-pound, 13-ounce ball, 59 feet, 8 and a half inches. But the real story was the battle for team points behind her. Michelle Carter, the daughter of the national high school record holder Michael Carter, held up her end of the deal with a second place finish, garnering eight points for Texas. Bruin Jessica Cosby matched her third place finish in the hammer with an identical finish in the shot, and her six points helped keep UCLA in contention for the team title. So as we look at the updated women's standings, Texas maintains the top spot with 45 points. South Carolina very much in the mix with 40 points. We'll come back to Sacramento with more. 96. Best mark in 2005 belonged to Sheridan Kirk from Auburn. 146-17. Jonathan Johnson likes to get out fast. That's been his trademark. It certainly has, Ian, and he is a star out of high school in Abilene, Texas and has continued to run well, made the semifinals for the U.S. Olympic team in Athens at this distance of 800 meters. And Demetrius Milkevich. Milkevich comes from Latvia, runs for Nebraska, and he too was an Olympic semifinalist at 800 meters. Started out in high school running the 100 and 200 meters. Look at the lane assignments with Johnson running out of lane number four, Texas Tech, Milkevich from Nebraska. The interesting thing about this to me is Jonathan Johnson loves to be aggressive. He said, I'm actually training three hard races in four days for the world championships. If he goes out in faster than 50 seconds, I think he risks tying up on the next and last lap of this race. Let's see what he does. There he is out right in the front. And the question is, if he goes on 49 seconds plus, I think it could be a mistake for him late in the race. 50 to 52 seconds, that's his comfort zone. And it is Johnson in front with Milkevich in second place. Sheridan Kirk from Auburn, best time in 2005. He is number three right now. Man with great speed, Kevin Hicks from Florida A&M is back in the pack in fourth right now. Let's see what his split is. Coming up to the first 400 meters of this race, Jonathan Johnson in the lead. 50 seconds, 50.12 seconds. Might be in his comfort zone. Milkevich can run with him, and Milkevich has run him down from behind in one or two races this year when Johnson has gone out a little too aggressively. They had a terrific duel at the Big 12 championships. Jonathan Johnson, the 2003 NCAA runner-up, won the event in 2004, trying to add another title to his credit. The strain is on Johnson's face from looking at that 200 meters to go. Milkevich drawing off and drafting, just like at Indianapolis. It takes effort to push the breeze in front when you're in the lead, and the man behind saves energy. Look at Milkevich pulling even. And Kevin Hicks trying to make a move. Milkevich, he passes Johnson. Here comes Hicks. Hicks and Milkevich on a fight to the finish. Demetrius Milkevich wins it in the men's 800 meters. 144-74 for the sophomore Milkevich from Nebraska. I, that is the fifth fastest time run in the world for 800 meters this year. Sensational race and a breakthrough for that man that just came into our screen, Kevin Hicks. Just a sophomore at Florida A&M. What a great race for him. And Johnson again faded a bit here. He was dangerously close to going out too fast in my opinion and it cost him. Johnson finishes in sixth place after leading the majority of the way. I read his face on the last straightaway there, and I thought it was quite strained here with 200 meters to go. Trying to hold on 50 seconds is phenomenally fast here for the first 400 meters. Milkevich drafted off him, conserved energy, swept around him, kept his form, and ran well. His training in high school at 100 meters to 400 meters paid dividends. He's got great speed, as Johnson did, and he ran a tactically excellent race. Now look on the outside, the young man from Florida A&M, the U.S. National Indoor Champion is Kevin Hicks, number 747, ran just a sensational race, breakthrough race for him, and Melkavis just held him off and has a right to celebrate. And a look at the official results, Milkevich from Nebraska wins it. 
Kevin Hicks finishes second. Sheridan Kirk from Auburn third. Defending champion Jonathan Johnson, a disappointing sixth. Get complete recaps and results from all of the 2005 NCAA championships at NCAAsports.com. Some outstanding performances throughout the four days of competition. Some would say they've raised the bar. Great performances of the NCAA championships presented by Singular, raising the bar. Arizona's Robert Cesaret was runner-up in the 10K last year. He arrived determined to claim the top spot this time around but he would have a six-mile stare-down with Oregon freshman Galen Rupp. After training privately for the first semester, Rupp now wears the colors made most famous more than 30 years ago by distance icon Steve Prefontaine. The freshman sensation was ready to challenge both the past and the present. Using tactics that would have made Pre proud, Rupp ran on guts. However, the Arizona senior proved too savvy and won the night but we may be witnessing the dawning of a new day in American distance running. Two years ago, Michael Robertson captured the final individual NCAA title for the since disbanded SMU Mustangs. Now competing for Stanford, Robertson becomes a two-time champion with a throw of 2.02.5. Southern Cal's Ginny Powell, attempting to become America's next great sprinter hurdler, but she was challenged to the tape over the 33-inch barriers. And it's Powell leading the way. The mashup with Lopes came right down to the wire. I oh, what a finish. Somewhere, Gail Devers may be smiling. Indiana's Eric Wilson won the indoor long jump and triple jump and was favored to do so outdoors. He was leading with one round to go. But the sixth seed Fabrice Lapierre of Texas A&M stole the victory. With his parents on hand from Australia to watch, he improved his PR by almost a foot with a final round lead of 26 feet, 9 inches. In the women's 800 meters, it was Anita Denton of Arkansas by way of Jamaica who was chasing a personal grand slam. She won the NCAA Indoor Championships, then the Southeast Conference Outdoors, the Mideast Regional, and finally the NCAA Championships and by front running avoided a nasty collision behind her. Her winning time, two minutes, 2.84 seconds, and she concludes a terrific career at the University of Arkansas. Tennessee long jumper Tiana Madison was also pursuing an indoor-outdoor double. She made her statement early with a first round jump of 21-10 at a quarter. It was enough to win the competition. I always expect to jump further. That's just natural being as competitive as I am, but I'm happy with what happened today. Right now on the track, just over two laps remaining in the men's 5,000 meters final. We've got the Stanford connection. Ryan Hall, the junior, in front, just behind him, Ian Dobson, the senior. Interesting strategy going on here on the part of Stanford, and back in the pack right now, Wisconsin's top two of Matt Tegenkamp and Chris Zielinski. The four of them, these two men and the two Wisconsin athletes set out to break the will of Nick Willis, who is right now in third place. Willis has Olympic capabilities at 1,500 meters. They all fear his speed, and they all set a really strong pace iron through this race. 421 for the first mile. The second mile sped up to 419. These athletes are running right now 415 to 417 pace as they have just over a lap to go. And notice back in the pack is Willis. He has tremendous blazing mile speed, and the idea was work together and get away from him. And Ian, don't call me Ian Dobson, has the lead right now. Dobson. Ryan Hall in second place has not won an NCAA title after having a tremendously stellar high school career as a miler, running close to four minutes. This is his big moment. He is thought to have more sprint speed than Dobson in front of him as they approach the bell lap right now. Dobson has the best time here in 2005, 13, 27, 45, final lap in the men's 5,000. No surprise to me here that Dobson, fearing and training with Hall and knowing his speed, is accelerating in the front, trying to take the sting of the potential kick away from Ryan Hall. They are clear of the field by about 35, 40 meters at the moment. And there in third place, Nick Willis. He looks over his shoulder, maybe signaling to himself he can't get up and get any chance of the victory here with 200 meters left to go. 
Dobson from Stanford, the senior, up against Ryan Hall, his training mate who is a junior, having a breakthrough moment, is Hall in second place. And as they come around the bend, about 140 meters to go for the two men from Stanford. It is all Cardinal right now. Dobson leading Hall. Ryan Hall trying to make his move. Dobson holding him off, and now Hall with the big kick. Ryan Hall, the junior, will take the title in the men's 5,000 meters. And his time high in 13 minutes, 22 seconds plus for 3.1 miles works out to an average of 4 minutes and 19 seconds a mile. That's time 13.22 is the fastest 5,000 meters run by a collegian in this meet in 26 years. Amazing performance by Hall. On the last turn, they can look up and see a big screen, and they knew that Willis was too far behind to be a factor. Both men knew it would come down to them, and it was Hall's superior miling speed that made the difference here as he hit the tape, and a terrific performance by a collegian to run that fast at 5,000 meters. Stanford goes 1-2, Ryan Hall and Ian Dobson. Nick Willis from Michigan finishes third. Ryan Hall has his first individual NCAA title. Still to come, who will take the women's championship? Some drama here in Sacramento. Catherine, wait. Leave me alone. Yes, Arkansas is number one. It's been another day to remember for the Razorback men as they clinch their 41st national championship. Final event in the men's competition. It is the men's 4x400 four meter relay. A lot of team pride and a lot of personal pride at stake. Yes, Ian, as we look at Karan Clement, he's going to anchor Florida's 4x4 four four out of lane 7. This is the last time he'll run in a Florida uniform. It's going to be very important for him to go out with a bang. This is a team, I think, guys, that can run with anybody. And you're looking at Kelly Willie, who'll run the second leg, and he has an Olympic gold medal from the relay in Athens. And they're a deep and talented team. I look forward to seeing how they will compare up against the Floridas and Baylors here in the final. LSU will run out of lane six, Florida in lane seven, and Baylor, the 2004 champion, in lane number four. Clean start to the men's four by 400 meter relay. Now, Ian, they will stay in lanes the entire way until the baton is hand off, handed off. And then on the third turn of the race, at this point, the athletes will be able to cut in on the second leg over to the pole. LSU running in lane six, wearing black with yellow. That's Reginald Dardar running the first leg for the Tigers. And right now, Bernard Middleton, the freshman from Florida, is putting them in a very good position. He's actually in the lead right now. The entire Florida team in white being run by underclassmen, all four athletes. And right now we see a great move from Texas Tech's Jacob. The way to tell who's in the lead, see who hands off first right here. Jordan Kent from Oregon, good showing on the first leg as well. Florida in the lead, Reggie Witherspoon running the second leg, the sophomore. Bernard Middleton split 45.4 seconds on the leadoff for Florida. And this is always an interesting battle. You want to cut for the inside, but you want to cut such that you give yourself a position to not have to go around the turn wide. And as we see right here, Witherspoon from Florida does the best job of that. LSU's Kelly Willie now making up the pace. Kelly Willie coming on the outside for the Tigers. Sensational leg by Willie thus far. 100 meters to go, and he's not tying up. And look at Anico from, from Oregon keeping him right in the thick of things. And here comes Kelly Willie on the second exchange to Benny Brazel. LSU has taken the lead. I am Kelly Willie's leg, 44.4 seconds, sensational running. And look at Dominic Peterson now down the back stretch. He's taking Arizona State right into the lead. The question is, are these guys buying their time? Are they going to wait until the home stretch to go by him? Arizona State in front, Florida just behind LSU, and here is Brazil. And you've got to feel for Brazil. He ran a masterful race in the 400 hurdles only to get run down by Karan Clement. No Clement on this leg, though. Guys like Brazil who run the 400-meter intermediate hurdles have a lot of strength in the last 75 meters of this race in the open 400. Look at him go. Benny Brazil has kicked it into another gear. 
final exchange, Xavier Carter, the football standout for LSU, will run the anchor. Brazil split 44.9 seconds. LSU flying in this 4x400. Four and LSU had a little bit of a bobble on the exchange. Didn't seem to cost them that much. And here's Karan Clement. What can he do on this anchor leg? Florida trying to make up a lot of room here as Xavier Carter has really opened it up for the LSU Tigers. It's interesting that LSU picks a sprinter to anchor because he has the foot speed. The question is, does he have the stamina to, take, to go home? Oregon holding up very well, a surprise second place at this point of the race. Final stretch for LSU, Xavier Carter running hard for the Tigers, and they will win the men's 4x400 four meter relay. Look at the time, a blistering time for LSU. A new collegiate record. This is a record that people said would not ever be broken, a great UCLA team in 1988, and LSU has come here tonight and broken the collegiate record, 259-59, a new collegiate record for LSU. These four men averaged under 45 seconds per leg, four guys from the same school, sensational time. This is perhaps the deepest event in Olympic competition for the United States, sensational athletes. And this here's the handoff from third to fourth, Brazil to Carter. At this point, Carter knows these guys behind me are no slouches. They're anchoring in the NCAA championships in a 4x4. Four four. I know one of the things I think about when I watch Carter run is he played football this fall and he wasn't doing any cross country running or stamina building. Back in the pack, we should also mention Baylor right now in sixth place is Daryl Williamson anchoring for them. He anchored at the Olympics for the United States, and he's running the fastest leg today, 43.49 seconds, Hall of Fame stop. Larry, the LSU foursome of Dardar, Willie, Rozelle, and Carter. They break a record which was held for the last 17 years by UCLA, and once Carter got the stick, it was over. And watching his last lap here, Otto, it looks to me like Karan Clement is struggling a bit. Definitely, Larry. He's run the 4x1. He's also run the 400 hurdles. He broke the collegiate record. He's just tired. He's out of gas at this point. LSU has made history here in Sacramento. They win the 4x400 meter final, and they do it in record time. Let's go to Tracy Wolfson. A collegiate record for LSU. Benny, did you guys know that you had it in you? We knew from the beginning. We've been working the whole time. We haven't had like a really good season. And if we, walk forward, we put it together for the last one. And you see the time, 259.59. Now a new collegiate record, baby. Thank God we all did good. Xavier, you ran a 44 flat on that final anchor leg against some stiff competition. How did you get it done tonight? I just knew that I had to do whatever it takes for the team to win. We've been running hard all year. We ain't come out victorious, but uh, we got together and said tonight we're gonna eat. We're gonna get the job done, no yeah. matter what. Yeah. Kelly, was it a goal to break the record? I mean, we just wanted to come out here and give our best effort. You know, um, we just thank God that everybody was able to run to the best of their ability. Everybody gave each other an inch, and that's all it took for us to get the victory. Thanks a lot. Go celebrate, guys. And the official results from the men's 4x400 meter relay, LSU 259-59. They win it. Arizona State and Oregon just behind them. One final look at the men's team standings. Arkansas wins the national championship. Florida finishes second. And one final roar for the Tigers here in Sacramento. A huge personal best. A meet record, 46 feet two inches and most importantly she jumped the Bruins right back into the lead in the team competition and Larry although the Lady Bruins have the lead they do not have a team in the 4 by 400 meter the final event of this women's competition so Texas and South Carolina both with excellent chances to win the national championship and a chance to score points here the final event the women's 4 by 4 Bev Kearney, head coach of Texas, anxious moments for her and her team. They certainly are. The scoring system, 10 for first, 8 for second, 6 for third. If she gets 6 points, third place or better, Bev Kearney's team wins with a total of 49 points. You have to keep in mind, too, that last year they collapsed at home. So this would be huge redemption for Bev Kearney and her Lady Longhorns.
And we are ready for the women's 4 by 400 meter relay collegiate record held by Texas. Best college time this year, South Carolina. As we look at Sharetta Jones, she's going to lead off Texas in lane four. She's a great leadoff leg in that she's going to put them in the front. You don't want to win this race from behind. There's too much traffic back there. It can get dangerous. South Carolina having a terrific competition. We're considered outsiders for the team title, and they have an outside chance to do it here. Lane assignments for the entire field with Texas running in lane four, South Carolina in lane five. South Carolina with a chance to sneak their way to a national title with a big performance here and a disastrous performance from Texas. Also keep an eye on lane two, Wyoming. They're going to be led off by Shauna Smith. She won the 400 meter intermediate hurdles. an outdoor national championship at stake. Yeah. Texas wearing the white, clean start in lane four. South Carolina in the black in lane five. And South Carolina is going out very hard, but Texas is keeping pace at this stage. They're actually quite even looking at the spacing across there, no more than a step or two. Has anybody got a lead? I'd say in the middle of the track right now, maybe Texas is moving up. All Texas needs is a third place finish or better to clinch a national championship. And don't think for one second that each one of these Texas runners knows if we go out here and win third or better, this team title is ours. The athletes will stay in lanes the entire way through the first handoff and around the third turn of this race. Then they can break for the pole. You'll truly see who has the lead then. And the way to tell who's winning, see who hands off first. And here's the handoff. And don't make a mistake on the handoff if you're Texas. Incredibly even race thus far. Amazing. They were all within a step of each other on the handoff. Second leg for Texas. Malane Walker for South Carolina. Natasha Hastings, a freshman. And, Sher and Sharetta Jones just led off in 53-1. At this point, you're giving it all you have. At this stage, you've run all these rounds and qualifications. You are giving it all you have. It's all about the team right now. That is Stanford in the lead with Janice Davis, the sophomore, running the second leg. And Stanford's been putting up good performances all year. And here they are at the NCAA Championships running totally over their heads. Keep an eye on Texas in the white, beginning to fade a bit. Malane Walker, Miami makes the move with ATN. A big move also from South Carolina. And here we go on the third leg. This is an important leg because it's going to set up the huge anchors for all the teams. Miami with the lead. South Carolina trying to make up some room here with Tiffany Ross Williams. And Malane Walker ran 51-7 on her second leg. Coming into this race to show how even everybody has been. The top six teams in this race all within one second of each other. All season long for personal best for the team. But look at Miami out front here. They're trying to really upset the apple cart here. And we have to keep an eye on where Texas and South Carolina are at this point. Right now, Texas with Latasha Kerr. Running that third leg, Bev Kearney trying to urge her team on to a national title. Texas moving up, Latasha Kerr continuing to close down. Final exchange coming. Texas 400 meters away from a championship. Jerrica Chapel running the anchor for the Lady Longhorns. And she was part of that four by one that won, and she's gonna be keen to make sure that she comes home with not one, but two collegiate relay titles. Latasha Kerr has helped make this race thus far, and the woman ran the third leg for Texas, 51.1 seconds. Terrific time to get them in contention. Texas, second place. All they need is a third place finish for a national title. But they're not gonna be happy with that because they want the win. This is a source of pride. Texas athletes believe they should win every four by 400 meter relay they're in. Jerrica Chapel trying to close the deal. On the outside, Stephanie Smith, South Carolina, to the finish. It's Texas, a national championship. Yes! 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 And after all the disaster last year in the rain 
in Austin at home. They absolutely self-destructed on their own home track. And now this year she comes to Sacramento and leads them to her third national outdoor title. Great anchor leg that we just saw running for Texas. Jerrica Chapel, 51.2 seconds on the anchor. And it must be mentioned that Jerrica Chapel is just a sophomore, but what an experienced leg she ran. I know all of the women we saw running for Texas, underclassmen, sophomores or juniors, all four. The entire Texas team was underclassmen that came here to win this NCAA title. And Texas had to know that third or better would win it, but she wasn't concerned about that at all. Miami was in her sights, and Jericho Chapel decided, I don't, want I don't want second, I don't want third, I want the win tonight. She felt the pressure from Antoinette Gorham from Tennessee coming up on her. Instinctively and smartly knew this is the time to move. Don't get boxed in, make her run wide, and notice how wide Gorham ran for Tennessee on the turn. And she held her off. Look at the guts down the home stretch. This is Lady Longhorn pride at stake. And look at the move by South Carolina being made also by Stephanie Smith. Stephanie Smith definitely ran a fantastic anchor. Look at the look at Stephanie Smith on the outside and look at Jericho Chapel. At this point, you're not even thinking straight. Your brain is totally out of gas, totally out of oxygen. Stephanie Smith, 50.4 seconds. The woman on the left for South Carolina narrowly missing getting the victory from way back. Their last outdoor title came in 1999, and for head coach Bev Kearney, 2005, a magical year. The entire relay team downstairs with Tracy. Congratulations, you guys win the national championship on the 4 by 400 relay. Did you know what you needed? When you came out here today? Yeah, yes, we did. Because we, we know we wanted to meet really bad. I know that I've messed up in my 400 meter hurdles. And I know we come in this meet with five one head. And we know we need this victory. Coach tell us to come out here, focus, don't worry about nobody. Do what we got to do. And we came out with victory. I'm so happy. Jericho, you ran the anchor leg. Why did you guys come out here for the victory and not just play it safe? Because we knew we made a lot of mistakes. I didn't do as good as I needed to in the 400, so I couldn't let my team down. I was going to contribute something. After everything you guys were th going through last year and everything Bev went, has gone through, what did this mean to you? This meant the world. I mean, we've been through a lot of traumatic situations. We've overcome a lot of things that happened to us last year, but we had the quantity. With the quality and not the quantity this year. We came in with the focus. Even though we had some mistakes, everybody came and did what they had to do, and everybody played a part in this win. Final results, women's 4x400 four meter relay, Texas 3-27-13. South Carolina, tremendous effort, 3-27-22. The national title has returned to Austin. Bev Kearney and the Lady Longhorns lift their arms in celebration. Final team standings, Texas wins it with 55 points. South Carolina and UCLA tie for second with 48 apiece. Moments in that four by 400 meter final, Bev Kearney's team on the brink of a championship. The 4x400 relay team sealed it for Texas and a legitimate track and field star, Marsha Vett Hooker, overcome with emotion. The girls performed phenomenally. We had a, a few setbacks early on in the day, but they, they kept focused on what was important. You know, we just wanted to bring this victory home to show people that you never know, never give up on your dream, no matter how things look, never give up. The last race, the mile relay, we knew we had to get in the top three. We decided that don't go for third, go for the win. And you know, those girls, when you, when you think of Texas, I hope you think of fighting, because that's what they did. They fought the whole meet, and this mile relay was just an indication of what kind of fire they have inside of them. And the Lady Longhorns are certainly an extension of their tough-minded and resilient coach, Bev Kearney.
A meet to remember here in Sacramento, some incredible performances at the 2005 Outdoor Championships. Monique Anderson from UCLA, a new collegiate record. But one performance stood out above all the rest. And now, let's take a look at Pontiac's high performance of the meet. Florida sophomore Karan Clement, in his final collegiate meet, ended his brief career with a major statement in the 400 hurdles. It's a two-way battle. Brazil and Clement, closing speed from Clement. Will he pass it? Yes! Karan Clement comes from behind. A new collegiate record, 47-56. Now let's take a look at some of the other results here in Sacramento. Texas's Trey Hardy wasn't about to let the Lady Longhorns have all the fun. He finished first in all three speed events to win the 10 event multi with a score of 77-81. In the javelin, Dana Pounds of Air Force let it fly in the first round with a throw of 185-4. She dominated the field by 16 feet. The men's 3,000 meter steeplechase has 28 hurdles and seven water jumps to negotiate. And it was UTEP's Mircea Bogdan who ran, hurdled, and splashed his way to an NCAA title. Virginia Tech's Spiridon Julian found his way from Athens, Greece to Blacksburg, Virginia. And he left Sacramento, California as the NCAA champ, spinning out to 231-1 in the hammer. In the women's 10K, it was Sarah Slattery of Colorado averaging five minutes and 20 seconds per mile for the victory. It's just an awesome feeling, and it's a great way to end my career at CU. Go Buffaloes. Auburn's Edis Eltasevich became another indoor-outdoor NCAA champion. His winning throw of 68 feet 6 inches improved his personal best by almost a foot. In the women's 5K, Megan Metcalf of West Virginia is known as a solid miler, and she used that speed to sprint past Stanford Sarah Bay, winning in 16 minutes and 31 seconds. My favorite event produced one of the meet's biggest upsets as Cal Poly San Luis Obispo's Sharon Day upset defending champ and 2004 Olympian Shante Howard with a leap of 6-4. In the men's high jump, Jesse Williams leads a list of other winners. The Arkansas men with what has turned into their annual Pig Suey cheer, celebrating another national championship. Coming up next, look behind the triumphs and trials of big time college hoops. A return to glory for the Lady Longhorns, Texas wins the 2005 Outdoor National Championship. For Otto Bolden, Larry Rawson, Dwight Stones, Carol Lewis, Tracy Wolfson, and our entire CBS crew. This is Ian Eagle saying so long from Sacramento.